guys. God bless. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Char, or you can call me Charlene. And we're going to hop into chapter 37. And whew, I just realized I do not have this. Looking for... Oh, uh, one of my um fine liners, but I don't want that one. But I'm trying to figure out what's even going on here because that one didn't even have a top on it. Ha, help me, it's a day, it's a day. But I hope y'all are praying over there. <laughs> Pray for me that I get myself together. I hate rambling. And that's what I have to do, but I have to get my stuff together. But anyway, hope you guys are having a fantastic day. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for your word. Thank you for YouTube. Thank you for it all, Lord God. I just truly thank you. And you get all the praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so let me just use what I got. That's what I feel like the... I feel like the, the lesson is. Use what you got. Use, use, use what you got. Thank you, Jesus. And that's what I'm going to do. So, let's get into it, shall we? This, y'all know, 36 was very hard. All the names and stuff. This one definitely should be better. But I am grateful also because the Bible isn't entirely like that. And that's something to be grateful for. Um... We have just enough information to get the job done, get the task done, and then we move on, right? Actually, let me see what this code looks like. All right. Come on, get it together. Jacob lived in the land where his father has stayed, the land of Canaan. This is the account of Jacob's family line. Joseph, a young man of 17, very important, was tending to the flocks with his brothers, the sons of Belha and the sons of Zapha, his father's wives. And he brought their father a bad report about them. Very important. Now Israel loved Joseph more than any of his other sons because he had been born to him in his old age. love and he made a ornate robe for him when his brother saw that their father loved him more than any of them they hated him and could not speak a kind word to him so you got jealousy envious all that vanity Joseph had a dream, and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him all the more. He said to them, listen to this dream I had. We were binding chefs, sheaves of grain out in the field when suddenly my chef rose and stood upright while your chefs gathered around mine and bowed down to it. His brother said to him, do you intend to reign over us? Will you actually rule us? And they hated him all the more because of his dream and what he said. When he had another dream and he told it to his brothers, listen, he said. I had another dream and this time the sun and the moon and 11 stars were bowing down to me. When he told his father as well as his brothers, his father rebuked him and said, what is this dream you had? Will your mother and I, your brothers, actually come and bow down to the ground before you? His brothers were jealous of him, but his father kept the matter in mind. So mind you, he said his father rebuked him. That's very interesting. His brothers were jealous of him, but his father kept this matter in mind. So he kept the matter in mind. Now his... Let me show them in view, sorry. 
Now his brothers had gone to graze their father's flock near Shechem, Shechem. And Israel said to Joseph, as you know, your brothers are grazing the flocks near Shechem. Come, I'm going to send you to them. Very well, he replied. So he said to him, go and see if all is well with your brothers and with the flocks and bring word back to me. Then he sent him all from the valley of Hebron. When Joseph arrived at Shechem, a man found him wandering around in the fields and asked him, what are you looking for? He replied, I am looking for my brothers. Can you tell me where they are grazing their flocks? They have moved on from here, the man answered. I heard them say, let's go to Dotham. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them near Dotham. But they saw him in the distance, and before he reached them, they plotted to kill him. Here comes that dreamer, they said to each other. Come now, let's kill him and throw him into one of these saturns and say that a ferocious animal devoured him. Then we'll see what comes of his dreams. When Reuben heard this, he tried to rescue him from their hands. Let's not take his life, he said. Don't shed any blood. Throw him into the Saturn in here in the wilderness, but don't lay a hand on him. Reuben said this to rescue him from them and take him back to his father. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe, the ornate robe he was wearing. And they took, go back here, stripped. That's very important. And they took him and threw him into the cistern. The cistern was empty. There was no water in it. As they sat down to eat their meal, they looked up and saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead. Their camels were loaded with sp spices and balm and myrrh. And they were on their way to take them down to Egypt. Judah said to his brothers, what will we gain if we kill our brother and cover up his blood? Come, let's sell him to the Israelites and not lay our hands on him. After all, he is our brother, our own flesh and blood. His brothers agreed. So when the Midianite merchants came by, his brothers pulled Joseph up out of the Saturn and sold him for 20 shekels of silver to the Israelites who took him to, his, to Egypt. When Reuben returned to the Saturn and saw that Joseph was not there, he tore his clothes. He went back to his brother and said, the boy isn't there. Where can I turn now? Then they got Joseph's robes, slaughtered a goat and dipped the robe in the blood. They took the ornate robe back to their father and said, we found him, found this. Examine it to see whether it is your son's robe. He recognized it and said, it is my son's robe. Some ferocious animal has devoured him. Joseph has surely been torn to pieces. Then Jacob tore his clothes, put on sackcloth, and mourned for his son many days. All his sons and daughters came to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted. No, he said, I will continue to mourn until I join my son in the grave. So his father wept for him. So obviously his love for him was very great, y'all. Very great. And meanwhile, the Midianites, the Midianites sold Joseph in Egypt to Potiphar, one of Pharaoh's officials, the captain on, of the guard. Something stood out to me up here, how um, they recognized that he was their own flesh and blood enough not to kill him, but not enough to do him harm. And that's just like us, like we, we limit how much grace we want to extend. We pick and choose who, what, when, and why. And it is not what God wants us to do. Our grace should be the same across the board, like the same way. Um, there was gracious enough to say, hey, we shouldn't kill him. Um, there was enough grace present for them to recognize that this whole entire thing was wrong. But we know from reading the Bible is that all things work out for the good of those that love the Lord. So this is not the end of Joseph's story, but it definitely is an interesting beginning. And a lot of us can attest to this, that your beginning may have been the worst. You may have been outcast, rejected, ridiculed, rebuked, everything for just simply obeying, honoring God and, you know, carrying out his will. But a new day is coming. Whether you have experienced that new season on earth or not, 
a new day is coming where the victory and reign of Jesus Christ will be evident to all and that God's will will be known to all and be evident and be executed. And we are to be thankful now knowing that the victory is already in Jesus Christ. God has already won. So even though we got people all around us that don't get it, don't understand it, refuse to respect it, know the future, know your future. As long as you believe and you believe in the Lord Jesus as your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as the son of God, who was born of a virgin birth, who was on earth and ministered, who performed signs and wonders and miracles and deliverance and died on the cross and rose in three days and returned left and will return again you are saved and you better thank god for that it is not easy to teach and preach the gospel let alone to be a christian in today's world and to be different and have the evidence of god's grace and mercy on your life like these things will have people just not liking you they don't even know why they just don't like you. They don't care for you. They don't want you around. They mistreat you. But there's hope in God's word. And we're going to see that unfold later on in the chapters of Genesis. So hold your horses. That's the end, y'all. 37. Um, join me next time to tackle 38. To God be the glory. I love y'all. Thank y'all so much for studying with me. I know Genesis is not an easy task. But I thank y'all for being uh, steadfast in this. And I know God is so happy and rewarding of us being obedient and being diligent and having discipline and self-control to get this done. So this is a good thing. Well, the more you know, the more you can share. Love y'all. God bless. Take care. Bye.